is a meeting of the Athens Board of Zoning Appeals. The meeting is called to order at this time, 7 p.m., May 13, 2008. The board consists of five members and two alternates. An alternate takes full part in discussions of the board and becomes a voting member in the absence or conflict of interest of a regular member. Present this evening are members um, Greg Lavelle, John Golsey, myself, Mira Frederick, uh, Betty Hollow, Roger Gruzer, and Hector Flores. Um, Hector is our alternate and will be um, acting as alternate this evening. Our other alternate, Michelle Drabel, um, is not going to be present because we're going to be discussing a potential leave of absence for her. Um, okay, the board operates according to the following procedure. The chair will name and, st and describe the case. The zoning administrator will cite the specifics of the refusal of the case. The appellant or representative then will state the case for granting the appeal. Testimony next will be taken from those who support granting the appeal, then those who wish to speak in general comment, and then those who support denial of the appeal. Following all testimonies, the board will receive concluding remarks from the appellant. Discussion from the floor then will be closed. The board will deliberate and render a decision. Under Athens City Code, section 230703B, the board has the power to grant such variances from the code as will not be contrary to the public interest so that the spirit of the code shall be observed, public safety and welfare secured, and substantial justice done. Athens City Code, section 230910C, requires that variances from the code shall not be granted unless the board makes specific findings of fact based directly on the evidence provided to it that each and every one of the following six criteria are met. Practical difficulty or undue hardship. There must exist a practical difficulty or undue hardship caused by exceptional conditions pertaining to the specific piece of property. Exceptional circumstances. There must exist exceptional circumstances or conditions applying to the property or its intended use that do not in general apply to properties in the same zoning district. Uh, preservation of equal property rights. It must be determined that literal interpretation of the code would deprive the appellant, the appellant of rights commonly enjoyed by others in the same vicinity, while granting the variance would not convey a special privilege. Minimum variance. It must be determined that the uh, variance is the minimum required to make reasonable use of the property. Absence of detriment. It must be determined that the granting of the variance will not be of substantial detriment to adjacent properties nor materially impair the purposes of the code or the public interest. And last, not of a general nature, the variance sought must not be of a general or recurring nature, such that a uh, situation would more reasonably be handled by changing the law. The board also is empowered to um, hear appeals where it's alleged by the appellant that there's an error in the decision made by the zoning administrator regarding enforcement and interpretation of the code and requests for interpretation of the code. Any person who's aggrieved by the decision of the board may file an appeal to the Court of Common Pleas. Such petition must be filed within 30 days after the mailing of the board's resolution to the appellant. This evening there are four cases on the agenda. Number 0811V for 120 Maplewood Drive, which is zoned R1, Stacy Strauss is the appellant. And the last, the next three numbers, 08081, 08091, and 08101, are all for 1113 West Stimson Avenue, which is zone B3, and Three Wide Entertainment is the appellant. The board is required by law to take testimony under oath. Anyone wishing to speak this evening, please stand to be sworn. Do you swear that the testimony you will give to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? And when uh, each of you go to the podium to speak, please um, state for the record that you have previously been sworn, and I'll remind you. All right, this first case on the agenda this evening is um, 0811V for 120 <coughs> Maplewood Drive. Um, Stacy Strauss is requesting a variance to permit the addition of a to permit an addition to the existing residential structure, which will create 37% lot coverage, where 30% is the permitted maximum. And Steve, would you like to state the specifics sure. of the refusal? My name is Steve Pearson. I'm one of the city zoning administrators, and I have been sworn in. Um, in the packet of information you received, you should have, um, there should have been a copy of um, the site, the neighborhood, um, it illustrates the size of the lot and the lots in that particular area. 
Um, the request is to add um, an extension of a kitchen, a half bath, and a mud room um, on the back of the existing residence. Um, unfortunately, that percentage of lot coverage then puts it at 37%, where 30% is the maximum that the code permits. Um, besides the letters of support that you received in the mail with your mailing, I've received two additional letters of support that are contained um, in the case file um, from other neighbors um, and have received no letters um, in opposition. Okay, uh, the uh, lot coverage is currently uh, at maximum, or is it... Um, it's it's going to be ex exceeding the amount, but how how much did that um, addition of the garage that was put on some years ago um, affect the the lot coverage? Would the house, if it hadn't been for that garage, would this house addition have still put them at um, over the amount? Um. Not having prepared an answer to that question, I can just surmise what may have happened with the permit to construct the garage. Uh -huh. um, it would have been refused if the lot coverage created by the a, okay. a detached accessory structure would have exceeded 30 percent. So yeah. I'm going to guess that it came very close to, okay. but did not exceed 30 percent. Um, I think the application said the garage was constructed in 1999. Right, and it did not require, I couldn't remember, but I didn't think I remembered any kind of variance having been required for that. No, I don't okay. believe so. So there's no other variances that have been granted to this property at this time. <clears throat> you know, and, I, if I had known the question ahead of time, I could have checked the record, but I'm going to, again, I'm just going to have okay. to assume that there was, there's okay. no other cases involving this not property. To put you on the spot. Just if you knew right I've and been you know here everything. I've been here 14 years and I don't remember another case yeah. regarding 120 Maplewood I don't recall they're having done anything but just wanted to ask okay does anybody else have any questions for Steve before um, we hear from the appellant okay. thank you and um, at this time Stacy like oh, sorry Stacy Strauss like to would you state your name and address for the record? Yes. Good evening. I'm Stacy Strauss. I have been sworn in. I live at 120 Maplewood Drive, as does John Ellis. I may refer questions to him. Um, we also have addition, additionally from, in addition to what you have in your packets, some photos that show the existing back porch or landing. And, and then it's marked out so you may see that the addition as planned would only slightly replace that existing landing, thereby only removing a small amount of green space, which again is marked out on the third photo. Should I pass it? Would you like to pass the Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to Yeah, the only other thing that we would add from what you have in the paperwork is just uh, hopefully the support of the neighbors you see there with their letters. And certainly we're looking to improve upon the property, which I believe in turn would improve that street, uh, the value of the homes on the street and in the neighborhood at large. Okay, and you're um, needing to put the addition on in order to um, provide yourselves with a downstairs bathroom. Correct. It, it would, it should, the plan is for it to be a full bath or a half bath. A half bath a half downstairs, bath. yes. A downstairs half bath. And um, to extend the kitchen and then to have an upstairs um, master suite. That's correct. Yes, and the entire structure will be 12 by 18. 12 by 18. Yeah, the exterior will be and 12 the, by 18. And the current um, little back porch area is a, um, ten I by got it on here somewhere. Ten and a half by five and a half. Ten and a half by five and a half. Okay. Has anybody? Well, I was there yesterday and I was looking in the back mm -hmm. and uh, I was wondering if you still would have enough room to turn a car into the garage, both, both garages. Mm -hmm. you would. Yeah, we're going to have, the addition will be in three feet on each side, mm -hmm. so that will allow the car to go in on the one side and then I wanted it to come in the equal amount on the other side so that the structure is symmetrical because the house right now is an American four square so I want to keep 
the integrity of the architecture of the original home, therefore coming in on both sides. And the two trees that are noted there, one we plan to trim back and leave in its existing place. The other we plan to replant in the front of the house. Mm -hmm. What kind of tree is that that you're going to be replanting? It, that's the, yes, the dogwood. The dogwood. Good work. This, your um, plans are all pretty straightforward and clear, so I don't have any questions. I want to note for the record that you seem to have the support of all of your neighbors that are um, impacted. We've got a letter from, um, let's see, Mary Rollins, which is 103, Sunnyside also. And then we have 110, which is right next door, isn't it? 111 across the street. Um, 109, 122, uh, that's the one right next door. Um, who were the other two, where were the other two letters that came in apart from those? Do you? The, there was another house behind us on Sunnyside sunny and then side. an additional neighbor across the street. Okay, so you have a lot of support for this. Okay. Yeah, many homes in the neighborhood have done something similar previous mm -hmm. though. And I did not live in the home uh, I've been there a little over four years, so I'm not sure of the, your previous question about the variance for the garage. I'm but I think it, it is sure a very large garage there. for that neighborhood, and if the garage were not there, I think we wouldn't be faced with, with this situation. Well, it would be nice to have both. Yes, it would. Okay. Any other questions from anybody? You will have an opportunity <coughs> to speak again at, at the end if something comes up in the meantime. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone here who would like to speak in general comment or in opposition? Well, in favor. We have so many people who have spoken in favor, but I don't see anybody here. <coughs> but is there anyone speaking in favor in general comment or in opposition? See? <coughs> Um, just a point of clarification, I noticed one of those photos um, showed an uncovered um, set of stairs mm -hmm. that are uh, concrete and a concrete pad. Um, uncovered stoops and necessary landings are not included in lot coverage, um, nor are um, slabs of concrete poured flat on the ground. Zoning is a, a, re is a regulation that has to do with uh, use of light, space, and air. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has been previously uh, determined by the city of Athens that a slab on grade or a driveway, um, something like that, is not a structure and therefore not subject to zoning. So if you might have had a question in your mind, you know, this looks like it's essentially just replacing a concrete slab. Um, it is, but it's subject to zoning where the slab is not. Okay, thank you. And there, if there is nothing else from anyone else, would you have anything else that you'd like to say? Did what Steve remarked on just now <coughs> bring anything to mind that you want to add to, to the record? Um, do I need to come? Uh -huh. If you want to speak again. <laughs> just that... Um, in, in my understanding, the issue was in green space. Yes. And although that's not part of the structure when it comes to, as he explained, um, <coughs> under it is a driveway. I mean, essentially, most of it is not green space. Mm -hmm. And so that would be my only comment. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, then, in that case, then, um, comment from the floor is closed, and we're ready to have our discussion and vote. Who would like to begin? Do you want to just start with a motion? It's, it sounds like a good idea to me. Okay. I move that we grant a variance to the property at 120 Maplewood Drive. <coughs> um, 
From 2311, Table A, Schedule of Bulk Controls, to permit addition of an existing residential structure, creating 37% lot coverage, where 30% is the permitted maximum, assuming that it will be um, done in accordance with the plans that have been presented to us. Second. Good. All right. In, in considering this variance, what is the practical difficulty or undue hardship that would exist if we were to deny this? I think that's the way we've doing, been doing right. the, the number one now. Right. You don't have a bathroom on the main floor. That's a bummer. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's it's fairly well considered to be standard these days to have a downstairs half bath. Um, I I do know the house. It it is, yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. It would be a a, um, a benefit and that is not exceptional to have a, a normal downstairs half bath. Um, what are the exceptional circumstances or conditions applying to this property that don't apply to properties in the same zoning district? Uh, small size of the lot and also most of the lots in the neighborhood, they are exceeding pretty much 30%. So that's probably true. That's, uh, because all of the lots are relatively small. Yeah. They're all small lots. The house next door is way extends way back, more mm -hmm. than what theirs does. So it's probably more than 30%. That's a good point. I'm not sure that it necessarily will be exceeding its lot coverage, but that it's extending back uh, further than this house will, even with its addition, that's, it's I think, significant. Um, so the lot coverage, um, yeah, I was thinking it had something to do with something else, but that one is sufficient. Uh, preservation of equal property rights. Would literal in interpretation of the code deprive appellants of rights commonly enjoyed by others in the same vicinity? I think it would. It will, yes. Um, I am interested that they're attempting to maintain the, um, the house in its style also. Mm -hmm. I think that's um, very interesting and really important. Um, but anyway, determining pr preservation of property rights, I would think it's pretty much the right to be able to have a downstairs powder room. Minimum variance, uh, is this the minimum required to make reasonable use of the property? Um, the size of what they're requesting, even though, as Steve points out, um, poured concrete doesn't count um, as a structure, it doesn't seem that they're taking away a lot of the backyard area <coughs> that already is there. It looks like they're trying not only to maintain the integrity of the design for the house, but also uh, a, a nice backyard. So to me, it is minimal. Does anybody as additions go, it's minimal? certainly minimal. Yes. They don't seem to be trying to do anything that's excessive for the type of house that it is. It's just going along with the type of house, but giving it some modern update. So, okay, minimum variance. Uh, is this going to, well, absence of detriment? The neighbors seem to think there's no detriment. They seem to have this pretty much universal support of the neighbors. And with the variance thought on the last one, general nature with the variance, be something of a general recurring nature that should be more reasonably handled by changing the law? No. 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 Okay. In that case, are we ready to vote? Yes. We are. Ready to vote? I vote yes. 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 I also vote yes. Thank you. Your variance is granted, and uh, wish you luck on uh, living through the addition. <coughs> <laughs> Okay. Our next Madam Chairman, <coughs> I want to be sworn in. You weren't sworn when we swore. Yes. Do you swear the testimony you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Is there anyone else here who wasn't present when we did the swearings in? 
Um, would you like to be sworn at this time? You do also promise to, that your testimony will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. Yeah, I do. Okay. Good. All right, we have sworn four additional um, members this evening. And now we're ready to uh, do... There are three other cases on the agenda this evening, and all three of them are... Okay. Um, it was there, there was a cell phone that came on earlier. If everybody wants to take a look and make sure his cell phone is off, this would be a good time to do it. Um, the next three cases are all requesting administrative review. Um, it's for 11 and 13 West Stimson Avenue, and three variations on a theme, it, but they are three separate cases um, requesting us to uh, review a decision made by Steve. Steve, would you like to uh, go up and state what the decision was that you made and why you made it? Right. <clears throat> Again, my name is Steve Pearson. I'm the Zoning Administrator for the City of Athens, Ohio, and I have been sworn in. Um, the first thing I'd like to do is just a little clerical clarification. Um, these cases all have um, the letter I after their case number. Um, the letter I in the policies and procedures of the board indicates oh, that there's a request. Those are I's. Excuse okay. me. Sorry. There's a request by the appellant for an administrative review or an interpretation. I see. That um, stands for interpretation, then. Each one of these has a separate case file because there were three separate applications. Um, and on the letter um, of request um, from the appellant's representative, um, they cite the three original application numbers, 08, 37, 38, and 39. Therefore, that's why there are mm -hmm. three different cases. Each one of them has, as you mentioned, the same basic description, um, except one application. Um, well, this particular application is for a theater. And then a description of the theater is included in the copy of the application that you should have had in your packet, where it says description of proposed use. And then there's a description um, of the theater, which is the proposed use. Um, the board heard a, a case uh, a couple of months ago, two or three months ago, um, for the same property, same location, and I had deferred that to the board under their um, um, powers of original jurisdiction to review cases where a specific use um, was not exactly mentioned in the code. And if you recall, that decision um, you'd made a determination that basically the same proposal of use, only it was called assembly hall um, or private club. Um, the board determined that that was not of the same general character as specifically enumerated principally permitted uses um, in the zone, which is a B3 zone. And that was the basis of my refusal because these three additional applications for theater, one for a theater, one for a nightclub, and one for an entertainment business were basically the same use or same type of activity as was reviewed by the board at that previous hearing. So that was the basis of the refusal. Now the applicant is not here to ask for, you know, a variance or anything like that. They're asking for administrative interpretation or administrative review by the board. Included in your packet should have been a copy of the particular applicable code section um, which says that an appellant has the right to appeal a decision, um, interpretation, refusal, denial, um, any kind of decision of the administration. So that's a right people have to appeal to the board to determine if uh, the administrator has improperly interpreted the code or applied the code. And so that's, that's why we're here tonight. And hopefully an explanation of why there are three separate applications. This particular application as I mentioned previously, same address as the uh, previous case and the two to follow. Um, this one is for a theater. And can you restate why you 
refused it this time? Um, my, my application of a previous decision by the board um, to this particular property was that if the previous application was not of the same general character as principally permitted uses in the zone as determined by the board, mm -hmm. then neither were these. Anybody else have any other questions for Steve? A little later, but thank you. You're welcome. Right. And um, then, who is here uh, representing three wide? Three different cases. Things are starting to slide on me. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we met a couple of months ago uh, on this issue, and I'm here to uh, um, make a point and actually you identify yourself. You I'm sorry. Uh, my name is Scott Mergenthaler. I am attorney for Three Wide Entertainment, who's the applicant in this on these three applications. I'd like to address them all three at the same time, if that's acceptable. You have been uh, sworn in? I have been sworn in. Yeah. My it, business address is 366 East Broad Street, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. Thank it's you. perfectly, and it would be handy for us also to um, have you handle them all together since it's essentially the same thing. Okay. Yeah, it is. But um, I guess we do need to address each one of them individually when we make our decision. We will do that. I just didn't want to, you know, sit yeah. down and get up again for mm -hmm. nightclub and I for theater. I for that. A okay. And if I may approach, I did, um, I have some uh, documents that I'd like you to review um, as part of your packet. I did not provide it prior to uh, my talk today. Mm -hmm. um, but what it is essentially is um, <coughs> Mr. Stotts, who was, um, is Three Wide Entertainment, uh, had some petitions signed by maybe over 200 residents of Athens in support of his club. And there's also some photos of a business um, within a block, a city block of this particular location uh, that's running um, a sexually oriented business. And so I'll kind of tie that in as to why that's relevant to this appeal. May I approach hey, sure. to provide these? If, while you're coming up, could you tell us how many of those petitions are from the neighborhood and how many are just around town? There are, we don't seem to have any I believe they're all here. from around town. Yeah. There and are not, they didn't zero, or they didn't uh, uh, go into yeah, the no neighborhood addresses. next yeah, to no this location. Here, so we have no way of knowing if any of them are neighbors, which is what would be yeah. uh, most interesting. But here we go. They are submitted for the purpose of showing that there is a community sentiment that's in favor of this use. And if you'll recall, at the last uh, Board of Zoning hearing that we had, um, you indicated that there were 50 some negative letters and uh, emails yeah. and you read a couple into the record so i want to make sure that there's a record in front of this board that there is uh, people that are in favor of this use okay all right and that's the only purpose why they're there i'll explain the photos to you as i progress through my presentation <clears throat> well, since uh, we have these in hand i would just like to note that there are no addresses for any of these um, yeah. Names, yeah. which makes it um, hard for me to make any judgment about who, what, when, where, or what. I mean, if you just simply went into a male residence hall at OU, I expect you could get quite a minute, quite a lot um, of Well, actually, quickly. you'll see at the bottom of the pages, um, there are some that are, some of the petitions were for, for people that were not associated with the university. And some were I university say, I, students. I can't determine that because there are no addresses yeah. here. So. Well, you know what? I mean, in all fairness, we couldn't determine any of the addresses of the people that objected to this at the last BGA hearing either. Well, actually, the addresses were on the letters, okay. and uh, they were in the record. All right. Okay. Was there um, any identification checked with each individual when you asked them to sign? I, you know what? There are original copies of those petitions that have addresses on them. And, and I don't have them with me today, but I could supplement the record um, probably as early as tomorrow if you wanted them. We just didn't put the addresses in because we didn't feel it necessary. 
but we can provide that information. Yeah, that, that, that information along with the ages of the people who signed would be very interesting. I don't believe we have the ages, ma'am. Okay. Oh, the, well, they attest that they are adults over age 18. Well, that, yeah. They, well, they, since, say, they claim that since they are. Since Mr. Eli Eckmans adds to his signature, I heart boobs, I assume he must be really young. <laughs> young? I don't Maybe know. not. Whatever. Some, some elderly people also heart boobs. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our position is really quite simple, and it's this, that the uses that we're asking for as a nightclub, a theater, or an entertainment are principal permitted uses in this zone. They're uh, addressed in the code itself. I just refer you to section 230407A, which basically says that um, any use that's permitted in B2D zone is also permitted in uh, the B3 zone. And those uses um, would include what we're asking for, entertainment, nightclub, and theaters, as long as they're 100 foot away from uh, any R zone. And I think we established uh, through Mr. Pearson's testimony at the last uh, board hearing that we're 120 feet away from the nearest R zone. Um, also, there are some other um, uses that could possibly apply to this. Uh, as far as uh, subsection 9 of that section goes for miscellaneous trades and businesses as long as they're 50 feet away from an R zone. And also I wanted to address um, subsection 12, which the board, I, I think, seemed to uh, hang its head on last time. And that, that provision provides for any use which is determined by the board uh, to be of the same general character of the above permitted uses. And not of the general character of the neighborhood, but of the uses that are enumerated in the code. And that distinction I'll try to uh, develop as I proceed here. The key that to, I think, all these uses is that none of them are defined in your code, okay? Um, you say in the code that there's a nightclub's allowed, that a theater's allowed, and that entertainment's allowed, but there's no definition in the zoning code um, so, um, again, I think we need to find a def def definition, and we went on to, uh, I guess you don't even need a dictionary these days. You can go to Webster's.com and get dictionaries, and that's where I got these. Uh, entertainment. I have a dictionary, so just in case we run into a problem. You can double check me. Uh, entertainment, and I'm going to paraphrase uh, some of it. An amusement or diversion provided especially by performers, um, a public performance, um, something diverting or engaging as a public performance. <clears throat> a nightclub is a place of entertainment open at night, usually serving food and liquor, and providing music, a space for dancing, and often having a floor show. Uh, and then the theater, um, relevant parts of that for our purposes are uh, a building or area showing motion pictures, a place or sphere of enactment, usually for significant events or action, um, or dramatic representation as an art or a profession. Uh, and so I don't think I need to rehash for this board. I will. Uh, and Mr. Stotts is here, who's the owner of uh, Three Wide Entertainment. He's going to tell you what's, what his business plan is. Um, but, I, but I believe that we all, all of us here, um, know what the use is intended to be. And it fits under each one of those um, definitions. Um, <clears throat> so there's no need to get to this section A12 to um, see if it fits with the general character of all the other permitted uses because what we're asking for here is a principal permitted use. And that's our position. That's the ruling that we would like the board to make. Well, what we're supposed to be doing here this evening is determining whether or not Steve made a mistake uh -huh. when he um, rejected, uh, he, to show us how what you are requesting uh -huh. is different from what was requested last time. If it's okay. not different, then uh, Steve made no mistake in, in rejecting it. Steve made his decision based upon what you folks determined. 
And my presentation is trying to point out to you not only the error of that, but also the error of his determination. But the only thing we're here to discuss this evening is whether he made an error based on what, what the decision was uh, last I, time. What my point is, okay, is that his decision in this case was based upon your board's decision last time. We so I need to rehash, I need to rehash those points as well as you know, so the that everyone will reasoning. understand on what we based our decision last time. But but right. but why Steve was in, in error when he determined that what they're doing this this time is just three different ways of, of calling uh, the same business that was already determined at the last meeting. And why was Steve wrong when he when he said that it's the same thing? And so it it it, it was already rejected. Well, because, because of the fact that these are all permitted uses, and if you define the terms uh, in an appropriate fashion, in the way that the dictionary does it, you certainly don't have anything in your code to do otherwise, then he's an, he's an error. I think your definitions from the dictionary are certainly extremely general ones, and I think we know from what you told us initially, not this time, but two months ago, is that this is not just a nightclub, or just a theater, or just an assembly hall, or just an entertainment. It is a very specific kind of operation. And as I pointed out in the minutes and the transcript before, there, there is uh, evidence that we may, the city may, enact laws in further furtherance of public safety, health, morals, and general welfare. And certainly we had people at our last meeting who spoke quite vehemently about protecting the general welfare and the morals and the health of the community and certainly the east side neighborhood. And we are allowed to address that. I also read into the minutes a number of cases that spoke to the fact that cities can regulate businesses that have a sexual orientation that are not obscene and therefore not protected by the First Amendment as long as we are not preventing them from being in Athens. We're not preventing this business from being in Athens. Okay. We are saying that given the nature <coughs> of the community on the east side and the comprehensive plan which chooses to develop the city in a particular way, we judge that this does not fit into the neighborhood and that it, because it has a specific uh, definition that you yourself write in here, it is not just a nightclub, it's not just a theater, it's not just an entertainment. It, it's more specific than that. Right. So the fact that you can look it up in the dictionary and get a very general uh, definition um, doesn't help me. Well, let me, let me address that because first of all, in all due respect, this board's not enacting legislation. And no, you started no. out saying you're entitled to enact legislation, and I don't think you have that power. That's no. not what we're asking we're you to do. I didn't say that. That's not what she said. I didn't say that. No, I, no, said that I said no the ability. city may. And therefore, our code, the first thing our code says is that the code is designed to protect just these things. So it is in our code. Our city can do it, and our, our zoning board can address those but issues. But your city has not done it prior to However, this application. we can address it. Okay. Well, I understand, I'm not arguing about right. the fact that you can address it. I'm just, I'm just trying to draw a distinction I that understand. you're not enacting legislation. Numbers, and the last time you spoke and cited case law, those were all cases based on variances. And we're not asking for variances. Our position is we don't need a variance because these are all permitted okay. uses under the and, code. And I'm pointing out that I, okay. for my own reading, mm -hmm. you can say, Oh, it's just a nightclub. Well, first of all, you're not having liquor. Most nightclubs, the dictionary says, um, serve liquor. You're not doing that. And, and food. And food. And food. Uh, so, you, so you're presenting a show. Well, and, usually serving food and liquor, yeah, it says. Okay. So, so you, have a diff you have a general definition and that you're reading from the dictionary, whereas on the, the application, you're giving a very specific well, definition of what you want. Here's, here's the issue, okay? Your city doesn't have a definition. I understand. Have, you know, and understand. so there has to be some guidelines and some way to cut through the ambiguity of this. And there has to be, you have to base your definitions on what's reasonable and 
We, uh, we think we did that. We did. Okay. We think well, we did that. obviously my client doesn't, but okay. I, I, I respect Understood. your decisions. Here's the other thing that I'm going to read. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and this is just a general statement again from um, a, uh, a municipal zoning um, guidelines that were given to us by the former law director. And this section is called the discretion of the board. And this particular sentence said, it is clear that the board must, in the usual case, examine the unique circumstances of the applicant the character of the neighborhood where the proposed use will be situated, the effect of the variant use on other property, the probable effect of proposed use on the area where it will be maintained, and the general effect upon health, safety, morals, welfare of the community. community. And I think that's what we thought we were addressing two months ago. Okay. And my point is, is that that memo that you're reading from is basically the standards for a variance. And that's not what, we're, what you're asked to do here. I don't know. You're not, not asked to determine true. if this, you're not asked to go through your six steps for a variance. I, I understand yeah. what you're saying. Okay. Well, well saying. but right. she's, she is attempting anyway, we, I'll rephrase it so that I'm sure I'm understanding correctly, but uh, basically just the basis of on which we're making our decision has to do with areas that we're empowered to consider whether this is a variance or not a variance, and it is not a variance, we know that it's not a variance, especially not this evening, it's not a variance. We're just trying to decide whether or not Steve acted correctly. But last time when we made our decision, it had nothing to do with variances, um, nor would it this time. However, people make their decisions based on criteria, and the criteria had to do with the welfare of the of the neighbors, the welfare of the, the the city plan for the neighborhood, and the other and things that she mentioned. And the impact Madam the Chairman, <coughs> and the, the, you made the point earlier. Was uh, we're saying that Steve was Steve wrong in making his decision about turning these three down? Yeah. No, Steve interpreted exactly what this board said when we made this first decision. Oh, that Steve was not wrong. Right. Now, are, are you asking for us to reopen the cases, or? Well, I I'm, think I'm saying that Steve was wrong. Necessary. Okay, and, and I, I would like to be heard not. on it. And we're saying that Steve was not wrong. Am I entitled to continue? Yes, yes you are. Certainly. Okay, I mean that's. I just want to have you know yeah. because, okay. you know, somebody a long time ago, probably before you folks on this board wrote a zoning code for this city. Okay, and it's your job to interpret it, and all I'm saying is is that. Mr. Pearson did not do it correctly because this use is permitted. Okay. Um, you know, and I also felt that um, the board's reliance upon this section A12 that was part of its decision that Steve based his decision on was erroneous as well because you folks talked about, well, there's a bank there, there's a restaurant there, um, there's... Um, a pharmacy there, and it's not uh, the general character of what your use is. And, and I don't read the code that way, and I don't think that's what the code says. The code says that you're supposed to determine whether or not our use is similar to the principal permitted uses that are set forth in the preceding subsections. Yeah. And so the if, code, if our case is... The code is giving some specific examples, and there's six, seven of them. Mm -hmm. And then it was up to us to see if this type of the business that you were proposing was similar or in, in the nature of those things, you know, and that was the basis of our judgment. And it wasn't. Well, but the analysis that I heard from the board the last time was you went and up and down Stimson Avenue and said, well, there aren't any other, in essence, there aren't any other sexually oriented businesses there, so therefore this one doesn't fit. Sir, and I don't think that's the appropriate no, analysis. That was the case. That was the case. Was the specific examples that were given in the code, mm -hmm. and along with whatever we know, we didn't go down the street to see what there is or there isn't. Okay. But you know, but this was quite different than the other type of the business. Okay, so, so that's that's also our point. We don't think that it is. Okay, if this isn't code? a nightclub, if it's not entertainment, if it's not a theater, <coughs> it certainly is similar to those three things. But you didn't persuade us last time, and I'm not feeling much more persuaded this time either. You, you are entitled to vote yes or no on this matter. I'm also entitled to make my argument, and that's all I'm doing. Oh, okay. 
it just seems that, that you're making the same argument as you made last time, and the last time you made it, we... But anyway, go ahead. You are entitled. It was advertised, and you make your... Thank you. So following, following along that same reasoning, okay, as far as this A12 goes, if you're going to look in the neighborhood and see if it fits, then just go one block away and see that there's another sexually oriented business in that neighborhood. It's called Passionate Kisses. And this place sells uh, sexual aids, lingerie, uh, adult videos, and all that. So, uh, do, they, do, they, do they do dancing? They do pole dancing there. They, they, they have they a pole it. there where they teach audiences. pole dancing. They, they, they have classes or do they have audiences? No, but I'm told that they do go out into the community and have uh, pole dancing lessons and pajama parties right. and but lingerie, you know, things and but stuff that's like that. that's not having people come in on a nightly basis to have yeah. uh, perform performances that um, yeah. people have to come in and park and hang out and all that. I mean, it's, it's, it's not the same thing. It's, if, well, it's a, if, it, if they're teaching it, they're not, it's not the same thing. Anyway, it, it, I, I don't think so. My point is it's the same thing. It's the same thing because you're, you know, the city of Athens has enacted legislation just recently that limits where uh, sexually oriented businesses could go. And in that legislation, it defines what sexually oriented businesses are. We're not are. talking about sex. We're not talking about sexually oriented businesses. We're talking about whether this is like a theater or whether it's like a, uh, well, the last time they said it was going to be like uh, a meeting hall or whether it's like a nightclub. It's not, you know, we're not, it's not, you haven't made any claim at any point that it's like a bookstore or a, or a, or a, clo or a yeah. lingerie shop or a pole dancing class. Yeah, I'm trying to make my point. Okay. 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 But I, I but in all due respect, you keep interrupting I'm sorry. me. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm, I'm zipped. <laughs> I will the not thing say about it is, word. is the new, the new legislation, okay, groups sexually oriented businesses all together and defines them to include Passionate Kisses, which is an adult sexual oriented bookstore, as well as an adult cabaret and adult theater, which my client Christopher Stotts and Three White Entertainment proposes to do. So the point being is that there, there is another business just one city block away that's also classified under your new ordinance as a sexually oriented business. So it does, in our opinion, fit within the character of that neighborhood. But the last point I want to make, and I know I will say this off the top, I know you don't agree with me on it, but our feeling is, and this is the feeling, this is the uh, point that we're going to stress heavily in the Common Police Court where our appeal's pending on the last case, is that in essence what you're doing is you're regulating this business that's a principal permitted use based solely on its content. And the activity that they're planning to do there is First Amendment protected activity. And the board's decision is, is, is not based upon the definitions that it, it, that's in the Athens Code. And we don't feel that there are reasonable interpretations of those decisions. We feel that our use is similar to everything else that's allowed in there. And so the only logical step is that you folks, or the city, don't like what's going on there. And it's, and it's a, a violation of the First Amendment. And I also just want to reiterate that the code's ambiguous, you know, and these, nothing's defined in it. And when somebody comes up with a use that clearly fits within the principal permitted uses, um, this board's granted an, a virtually unbridled discretion uh, to define those terms in such a way um, that is detrimental to this property owner's use. So. <coughs> Sorry. To be argumentative on this issue, I mean, that's my job, mm -hmm. um, but um, I just wanted to make sure that I had all that information in the record and that I was given an opportunity to explain the position on it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody have questions? I, um, I do actually have a question. Okay. Um, since the first case is in the appeals court, it's not quite clear why Mr. Stotts would submit three more applications to the zoning board and come back to us? Oh, oh I have an answer for that. Um, the first one was filed as a private club in assembly hall. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if, it, you know, the feeling is that is 
the board does not think that the use qualifies under those particular nomenclatures, then uh, we want to bring it up to you for purposes of classifying it as a nightclub, as entertainment, and as a theater. I see. Okay. So we're, we're, it's, we're, okay. Okay. Um, I'm, I just want to make a point sorry, about the new legislation that says we, your, none of your applications, I don't believe, at least the first one, wouldn't have anything to do with the new legislation because it was before the legislation. Oh, so, I, yeah, I know. I mean, I, I guess my, my point was not that the new legislation applied to mm -hmm. um, our applications, only that... Um, if you're going to do an analysis that there are no other um, of those types of businesses in the neighborhood and so that it's out of character, um, well, I wanted to indicate to you that what the city did enact classifies them all as sexually or oriented yeah. businesses and there's one there already within a block. Down the road. Yeah. Uh, next time this comes up, that'll apply. Okay. okay. Um, did anybody else have a question? No question. No question. That we just go back to was Steve wrong in his interpretation, or was he right in his interpretation? Yeah. Well, ultimately, I think that's the question. The 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 vote on yeah. that okay. Well, um, you'll have an opportunity to speak later, but I guess there are several other people here who want to speak now. So, okay. we'll thank you. Speak. Thank you. Um, who was the next person who wanted to speak? To come up and state your name for the record. And your address, and uh, affirm that you've previously been sworn. I am Chris Stotts. I have been sworn in. My address is 40023 Town Hall Road, Shade, Ohio. And uh, I guess you guys, I think you're classified kind of down on this is kind of a smutty deal, but and, and certainly there'll be adult entertainment certain nights of the week, along with stand up comedy as far as a few nights a week. Uh, and other, there'll be more than just that type of entertainment. Mm -hmm. And as far as ours, I know there's a lot of concern about the school down the road or two blocks over, however far it is. Hours would be at the earliest 5, 5 p.m. till 12. Because that's state law, it has to be shut down by 12 o'clock on the adult entertainment part. So I guess if you have any questions, I for have me, one question. I mean, I've, I've denied to post the A news and all that because yeah. they're just going to rattle about what they want to rattle about and to make it sound <laughs> as bad as possible. So. That's why they have a newspaper. Um, I have a one question. Why? What is it about Stimson that is so, is so appealing to you as a location for your business? It just seemed like the best. Have you investigated any place else in town? I mean, there there is no reason that there shouldn't be such a business in Athens. I think it's the the demographics are probably pretty good for it. But why would you choose? As far as the R zone choose, goes, I think it was me and Steve discussed that day when we measured everything out as far as how many feet it had to be away from. Mm -hmm. But why would you choose a neighborhood like that, which is really not close to? what I would assume your target audience would be. It's closer and closer. Well, it is getting closer and closer, isn't it? I take that back. But it, it is not, it doesn't seem appropriate, to, but, uh, and it seems that you're running into such a, a, a wall of opposition. What is it specifically attracts you to this particular location? It was available. And, of course, my sister works for Demetrius Prokos. Okay. And I confronted her about it a year and a half ago, maybe a little longer, and we've been discussing it. Because it was handy. Okay, that's a, that's a good reason. And it was empty. She informed me that New to You was moving out. Or... Mm -hmm. It's not, it seems like there's a lot going on now, but um, at that time it was. And, and there'll be a dress code. It, as far as violence is concerned, I mean, all coats will be taken at the door. No hats, no, no hooded sweatshirts. I mean, that keeps gang-related stuff out, so. Even the fact that you have to consider keeping gang-related stuff out is a little bit well, I'm, I'm, but um, I'm just not going to, I don't want it a trashy place, so. Yeah. But it, you, you feel that somehow. No, but that's how everybody's it classifying be, it. I don't but you, okay. So, so you're concerned that it not be a trashy place and it not attract gang. Everybody's seeing a bum interest. and think they've been a bum all their life. 
could be somebody down on her luck. I mean, that's just how they're. Well, they're going to have to pay to get into your right. establishment so that if they're down on their luck, they're not going to have money. No, I'm just saying that's how they're classifying it. I see. Okay. okay. Um, well, last time it was mentioned that there would be no sale of alcohol or uh, service of alcohol, but would you still allow people to bring in alcohol? Last time it was mentioned that you would. That hasn't been thought through real well, but maybe, possibly. There'll be a cover, I mean, there'll be a cover charge, of course, so. Okay. Okay. And so, your... No. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions? No. Right. Um, we may have some questions later, but right now there are none. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Who would like to speak next? <laughs> there was several other people who indicated that they wanted to be sworn in. Um, is there someone here who would... Sorry, yes, we would. Okay. Who would like to speak next? Okay. And your name and address and, for the record and the fact that you've previously been sworn. Hi, my name is Kate Sanders. I've been sworn in. My current address is 27817 Old State Route 346, Albany, Ohio. And the reason I'm here today, basically, is I work for Procoast Reynolds. I am Chris Doss's sister. I've worked with Pro Rentals for 13 years. Um, basically, this property became available October of 2007, although a year prior to that, when I knew the lease was coming up to an end, um, we approached New to You about renewing the lease, um, and I worked on trying to get other businesses to come to this property. I would make cold calls all day long, basically trying to get companies interested in our property because it was such a large property. We're talking about 12,300 square feet that we have that would be vacant when New to You moved out, in addition to the already 300, 300 and some thousand square feet that are already commercial space that is vacant in Athens, Ohio. And the companies that are only interested in Athens basically were food services. I traveled out of town to meet with people that were interested in the property. One was a really large bar that had a concert venue outlook that made a lot of concerts, but it was a bar. And we were in the lease negotiations, and when it came up to about the city regulations about no food or drinks, you know, that pretty much deferred them. You know, they don't want to, they don't want to fight with the city on that. Because no, no company wants to Wants to, wants to do that, basically. So I worked with a couple pizza franchises. I had a chicken franchise contact me. I had a hamburger franchise contact me. And time after time, nobody wants to go through the hoops. And it's really hard to rent the space. And then when I finally did, I worked with my brother on this. I told him, hey, it's coming open. It's coming open. You know, and this fits with the rules but that, that the code set forth, and then it gets turned down. Any questions? Well, that gives us some good, <coughs> good background on, on the property. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Who would like to speak next? Uh, well, just a moment. Would you like to come? Um, Are you speaking to me? Yes, oh, will you? You stood first. <laughs> Um, most of you know me. Um, my name is Dimitris Prokos. Uh, I'm, I'm, my house is at uh, Five Longview Heights in Athens. And, and, um, and you were previously sworn, right? Yes, I was sworn. Yes. Um, I want to touch some, maybe give you a little bit of history and then um, realize what's really going on. Uh, Kate, um, my manager, uh, she touched the basis of how hard it is to try to, how hard we have worked to bring uh, a commercial tenant to Athens. And um, when we found it from Athens sometimes, like uh, one of the bar was from Athens, am I correct? Yeah. Um, and uh, we had pizza places, uh, we had um, Tim Hortons on the end, and uh, that is what you want to put there. I'm sure you would like to have a Tim Hortons there. I don't think one member in this place doesn't like to see Tim Hortons there. I'm sure this, you would agree that it's fine to put a pizza place there. You will agree that it would be fine to put a bar there. 
Um, if you don't, is any of you doesn't agree to see Tim Horton there? Is anybody in the crowd doesn't like to see Tim Horton there? <laughs> I mean, really. But guys, that's what we want. That's what I want. I have over a million dollars on that property, okay? And when I'm finally finding these people and I spend hundreds of hours with my people trying to get these people, then they come into Athens and they call in the code office and the code office say, sorry, we, you can, cannot have a business that can serve food or drinks on that property. Because, not you, but another body has put a regulation. How about the B3? How about the most unrestricted property a, a, a zone, a property in the most unrestricted part of town? And there are regulations, somebody put regulations three years ago, which later on they have admitted that was a mistake, that you cannot sell food or drinks on that location. Am I correct, Steve? Is it a, a, is it a, is it a regulation, a law that stops to be serving food or drinks in this location? Um, Please. What was the question again? The question is, can, I, can a business right now go open up in my location? Can Chuck E. Cheese come in my location that wants to sell pizza and Pepsi? Can they come in my location? Is they, will, you, will you allow that application to go through? Um, I believe Mr. Prokos is referencing a section of the code that says that an eating and drinking establishment must be at least 200 feet away from a residential zone. Yeah. And again, the code does not specifically say what drinking is. Um, administratively, the application of that section has been for places that had eating and drinking of alcohol. Eating alcohol? So it says eating and drinking. So, for example, you know, service of alcohol um, would, not, would not be permitted because it's closer than 200 feet. But just a restaurant would also not be permitted? Now, if you look at, if you have your code with you. Yeah, I'm looking at it. It's yeah. B. B yeah, it says eating and drinking establishments, and it, but it doesn't Technically, say. Technically, it wouldn't be allowed. Yeah, it doesn't say drinking Pepsi, drinking coffee, drinking beer. It just says eating and drinking. But that's legislative. That's not us. It says no serving. It will not be allowed to serve if you have in front of you uh, food or drinks. Drink. It says and drinks. And drinks, correct. Uh, so therefore, you cannot serve donuts and coffee. You cannot serve, okay? I, I agree, except... Okay. You cannot serve pizza and Pepsi. I think usually when we talk about people drinking, we are not really talking about lemonade. You're correct, except in, your, in our code, we do have the word that says alcoholic beverages also. And in this Perhaps. particular section, does not say alcoholic no. beverages. Okay. It says drinks. And again, I mean, I mean, we cannot just keep on interpreting words the way we want them in every application. But this um, seems like drinks, something... if we open up a, a, a dictionary, a, 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 we all know what's a drink. Well, even uh, if Steve says no, you can come and get a variance. It's not us. It's it's not not us. Well, yeah. okay. Yeah. I don't need the variance. My tenant didn't need the yeah. variance. Yeah. And when the so variance code nice checks with Steve and says, can I put a restaurant there? I'm talking about Tim Horton. If they can come, you maybe if get they, a variance. If they wanted to come and get a variance, if it was really needed, they, uh, you know, that would have been appropriate to request a variance. Um, it seems, of the way this is worded. Um, also, uh, being addressed by city council would be appropriate, but um, that's not what we're discussing here anyway. It's not about mm -hmm. a Tim Hortons. No. We're, we're no, I'm just to give you a little bit of history, and okay. I'm verifying my facts. Okay. With, that's why I ask yeah. the help of Steve to mm -hmm. give us, and you have the code in front of you, mm -hmm. that verifies that this property, although it's a B3, the, in the most restricted place in Athens, uh, a most restricted business zone in Athens, is not a B4, okay? I cannot put a restaurant, but a B2 can have a restaurant. And you know what's ironic, and it is really ironic, guys, the 200 feet that, that I have R1 from, the, from my business, um, from my property, is not up the street. Up the street we have the cleaners, we have the old Bob's uh, um, grocery store. And now, you know, you go all the way to East A Street, okay? But, so it's not 200 feet there, it's not near one. If we go down the street, 
We have the post office. We have well, first we have Joaquin Valley Bank. We have post office, and we now we already past the 200 feet, and still continue with other business like uh, the attorney office, Garrick and Garrick, and then further down the Joaquin Valley um, uh, trading post or whatever it is, is the name of the business. It's not behind me. It's not behind the building. Like going behind the Palmer, you know, we have a bowling alley, and then we have R3, the big apartments that are being built right now. Within from, you know, so we don't have anything 200 feet around the property. You know what is the R1, 200 feet? That's very interesting to all of you. You've taken the tape from the front door of my uh, building. You go across the street of the second busy street in Athens, Stinson Avenue. You go over a restaurant that serves food, drinks, any way you call drinks, and specifically alcoholic drinks. And then you hit the zone, not a residential, not an R1, but a line that somebody has put on the map says, this is R1. And because of that, I cannot, I cannot rent my property because to anybody that really that interests me. That sounds like a really unusual circumstance that would really, really speak, be spoken to by some of our variances. That's very good, but you know, I'm not <coughs> asking for a variance. My tenant is to ask for a variance when my tenant comes to you. Now, it's not my, I cannot force my tenants. I'm, I plead with them to please apply, let uh, the court office turn you down, and then you have a chance to go with the variance. Some, obviously, none of them choose to do that. This gentleman here has choose to, to take the, the route of trying to figure out how the city wants him to do a business, and he's spending thousands of dollars on, on trying to do that. Not every tenant willing to do that. Tim Hortons said bye to Athens, hasn't been here anymore. Um, now, let me tell you something else that it is very interesting. Have you seen too many new businesses coming in town that they are not food-oriented business? Well, that's what the businesses have to choose too. And they are food-oriented or bars. And, and the code does not allow them to come. I'm not saying it's your foul, guys. I'm not saying that people who wrote it realize what they were doing there. It's been a mistake. They have admitted it's a mistake. Uh, but this is the fact. What you want, what your citizens want, what I want, is we want it, but you, the code does not allow it right now. Okay? It's not for me to change any codes, but that's what happens. Now, it is something that, finally, and let's go with the history because it's very important. Then we go, we come to the city for, back in 2000, we wanted to put apartments there. And we spent thousands of dollars with the architect. By, the, by name back then, uh, uh, co-architects was Laszlo Cohen Parker, that was an architect on East A Street. A very nice gentleman, very, very able architect. He did a very nice drawing about putting apartments there. At that point, was an organization running my spot, my, that location, New to You. New to You so happened to be run, it was a non-profit organization that all the money was going to uh, Athens Foster Parents Association. On that, uh, in the Athens Foster Parents Association, we have spent in the last ten years donations. Please. Three hundred seventy thousand dollars. In the last ten years, it is on our taxes. We have given them three hundred seventy thousand dollars. It's an organization we support because they're helping the kids. Now, the, the last thing I want to do, ask them to leave because they don't keep the place clean, because they don't take care of the parking lot, because they junk up the place. I cannot do that because they're for one of the best causes in my heart. So I did not ask them to leave. I didn't put the apartments there because back then it was 99, I think, was one parking for one, uh, for one apartment. I had like 60 or 70 parkings and only and I was only putting 30 apartments. I had two parkings per apartment, okay? Or I think maybe it was one and a half parking per apartment. I didn't do that. Then later on the city, no, you again, somebody for, with the right reasons, they changed the law and says that you have to have one parking per tenant, even if you're that close to uptown, <coughs> okay? So now I cannot put apartments. I cannot rent my space. And then finally I say, okay, I'm going to go with the flow and I'm going to try to rent it to a retailer that is, I know is hard to find because not too many have come in Athens, so I don't want to find them. Athens has over 300,000 square feet. And please 
check on what I'm telling you. 300,000 square feet of commercial vacant space. Okay? And now, on top of that, instead of the, the government and the bodies in the government to help to bring some more business in, we keep on putting regulations say no drinking of food served within 200 feet of R1, even if to get to R1 you have to go over another restaurant. Okay? But, you know, I know, I know it sounds crazy, but it's a reality and I'm dealing with that. I have a building that I'm paying mortgage payments. Okay, you don't pay it. The people who don't like me to put a business there don't pay it. But I do. Okay, then finally, I'm coming to the city and says, well, if you don't like this business to go in, let's go ahead and put the apartments. It goes with your comprehensive plan that we all have paid from our taxes thousands of dollars to engineering company, and they say, that is what we're supposed to concentrate the students. And I'm coming in, you know, I got some encouragement for some local officials, and I, and I went to the board and tried to push this one forward. They, I was too, the business, I was too um, overpopulated because of my parking. I only had 70 parking spots. I came up with the idea to use zip cars. Zip cars is a car that you, you can go in the, uh, the car will be parked in a special location. You go with your car that's been uh, uh, given to you by the company. You have to be 18 or older and have driving license and insurance. That's the qualifications. You open the car, you drive it for a couple hours, you park the car back in the spot, the car gives you a receipt. Okay, and, and via cell phone sends a receipt to the main office. You've been billing your credit card, or once a month, or whatever is the arrangements is being made. I offered that to the city as a better idea that having them diesel buses that run up and down on, or all over the place with only two or three people in them. And then I'm presenting that. Then they want me to change the plans because I can only go 45 feet. We've taken all these plans that we spent thousands of dollars because first of all, Mr. Cole had done them and then we went with Mr. Mike Knoll uh, on uh, Richard Lovney. I'm going back to the, to the board. The board liked what they saw, but again, they, asked, they had a good idea, which I agree with the idea, and sent us back to the drawing board, which is thousands of dollars when you pay an architect to do that, and we put a green roof on the building. We're going to be the only building in Athens, Ohio, that the first building in Athens, Ohio, that will be residential, and will have a park on the top. Will be trees, gonna be grass, gonna be benches, gonna be walkways, and <clears throat> we offered to do that. That creates a big expense on creating a, a structurally a building that can do that. Okay, so we're going that far. We had to redesign the building. Then, but the board says, well, okay, you can go to the next step, and now you can apply. But in order to apply, you're going to need 1400 They didn't tell me that. But when I went to apply, I found out there would be $1,400 to just apply. Now I have spent about $60,000, and I'm going to continue spending to maybe get a yes. Well, business people don't like to do that, especially when they have vacant properties around, and they don't have the, res the extra resources. Okay? Then I'm going to my architect. How much is that going to cost? Oh, they're going to cost maybe, we didn't know exactly what, but probably an, around another $12,000 in order to give you the answers. We have to design part of the project in order to give the answers that the city needs. Okay, this is why let's put the stuff there. I, I cannot keep on spending money and I haven't even gotten encouragement and I'm going to be, I cannot spend $100,000 to be turned down. Okay, so then I say, let's go with the flow, let's try to get any retailer we can here. So the girls concentrate uh, in my office, the managers, getting on the internet and call, going, find the names of the people who are responsible to make decisions in different companies. And finally, when you get to talk to them, they're getting 100 no's before they get to one yes. And you know how reality is when you do cold calls. Finally, they get in a company, and I'm sorry, if, uh, I keep on referring to Kate, the two company, Kate? Fascinating. <clears throat> Fascinol, it is a company that will, will, Kate is bringing in Athens. Kate is bringing to Athens. Kate called these people. Kate found these people. They come in my business and they say, here what I want. Okay, I says, great. 
I'm going to rent to you guys. Okay? And the city is going to be glad. I'm going to be glad. I'm gonna, you know, but we cannot pay you that much. Never mind, I give it to you for half the price that I was getting before. Still, hear what we want. Okay? My taxes didn't went down by half the price, by the way. So I say, okay, we're going to give you what you want. The first thing they want is to have a door that a forklift can go in and out. Second thing they want, so the place to be able to bring a truck in, paved. Th third thing they want, a uh, whole bunch of changes inside which I agree to do. Okay? Uh, Changing the floor, put the, the servicing they wanted, the lighting they wanted, they had the engineering specs that we, they want us to do. I agreed to spend all this money just to get me a tenant. Then I go to Steve's office, and I say, Steve, I'd like to do my, uh, and by the way, Mr. Pearson has done a great job to, to be in the middle and interpreting what is in front of him. Okay? So when I went there and I said, I understand that uh, uh, the city has a problem with the way our, our care is cut. And you want us to change it if we have the opportunity. What's going on in front of the place, there are many, the many points that you will drive a car on the parking lot. Them points have actually a curb, which is not good for disabled people. You know, the new curbs, they're going, you know, now it is a sidewalk, then eases down, and then it's, you know, doesn't have just a curb breaking the sidewalk from the driveway. And, uh, and then when I was asking other questions and asked how, you know, how he would like to have that, and which he says, by the way, that's not my call, you have to go to the transportation department. Uh, to, he gave me a telephone number and a, and a gentleman's name, I think it was Andy, the first name, I don't remember the last, he probably, you probably know who he was talking about. But, uh, and um, and uh, then I says, well, you know, I'm going to put, I'm going to pave the whole parking lot with uh, cement, because last time, we, um, because in a commercial lease, the, the tenant takes care of the parking lot. And last time was blacked up, but the tenant did not seal it like supposed to. And if you have a blacked up and you don't seal it, over the years becomes almost uh, gravel. And that's what has happened in our parking lot. In the last 10 years, it hasn't been sealed, or 12 years, and it's been uh, totally deteriorated. So the, 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 uh, the tenant required a good parking lot. We were to give him a good parking lot. So we're going to, uh, and I to explain to Steve that I have the contractors tomorrow coming in to do the whole parking lot. Steve says, well, you need to read the code about parking lot. Oh, I said, I didn't know there was that many regulations about parking lot. He says, you need to read that. So I read that, and let me tell you what I found out, and ask the questions, and I got the answers. If you do any more than 25% of the parking lot, you have to bring it to the new standards. And I says, well, new standards, no big deal. Six inches, eight inches, I'm going to make it strong. I'm going to be nice. I'm taking a gravel parking lot, or actually deteriorated asphalt, and I'm going to put cement. I'm going to spend $75,000 to put cement all the way around my property. Okay? But it's a problem. If you move, do any more than 25%, you have to bring the new standards. The new standards tell you you have to put a grass area, and if you put, you know, you need trees, you need, to, you know, and if you do that, you, when I lay it out, I lost about 22 parking spots. Now, if I lose 22 parking spots, I can rent my building because I don't have enough parking left to rent my rest of my building. Okay? So, I cannot put a retailer because not too many retailers are going to come on a gravel parking lot. That's again, it's not you, but realize what has happened in this situation. So, the things, you know, we, we try to bring Tim Hortons, we try to bring pizza places, we try to bring bars. We want that. You want that. Your, our citizens want that. But we want it, but we don't allow it. No, you don't allow it. The city doesn't allow it. I mean, somebody has made the, the rules. That's we what try to put the board apart. is here for, though, is to address those kinds of problems. If you have a specific piece of property with specific requirements and a, and, and a need that can't be met because, the, um, because of, of restrictions at the city, that's what this board was established to do was to make it possible for you to come and request a variance from those code requirements. Um, and when it seems that you have a strong case, many times those, those uh, variances are granted. But that's not 
you know, a different tenant going to require different variances. No. I cannot come here and ask you for theoretical variances. No, no you can't. The, okay. the, the, the tenant who needs the variance is the one who requests the, the, the variance. From the well, company. why don't you, I'm sorry, I don't want to say that. Why? Uh, you asked me to, uh, to, to answer why Tim Hortons hasn't come here for no, no, because no, I don't I, have I, the answer. Mr. Perkers, excuse me, Madam Chairman. Mr. Perkers, I'm, I'm, Mr. Perkers, I'm, I hear good. your frustration and, and I hear your, and I feel your frustration. Yeah. However, this is the zoning board. I think, and, and we allowed you to ventilate for a while, but number one, if you can expedite, we don't need any more further history. And number two, I think a lot of what you have to say should be addressed to city council. Yeah, well, um, I think. Everything that you're saying needs yes. to be addressed to City Council, uh, but but they uh, hopefully they will be seeing this this evening. But uh, this is we can do nothing about the situation, excepting in a specific instance where there is a specific need that that can be addressed by us with a variance. Then you request a variant, uh, request a hearing, and we see what we can do. But for this, we as you said we have lots of background now. We understand the frustrations. But this is not just about frustration. It's to show you that this place cannot, at least on my checking account, cannot be stay vacant. And um, the vacant places usually start becoming a problem to the city also. You cannot see that very good. I'll give you better pictures in a minute. This is no uh, box. It is a vacant place, and over here, if you drive on the street, I'm sorry that the picture is not better because it's dark. It is graffiti on the top, almost on the roof of the building. Um, I'm running out of pictures. That's okay. Okay. I don't know what I have there. Um, yeah, this is the one you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, this is. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's very weird. This is more of Bob's thing, but let me give this gentleman this time. Uh, that more of Bob's. That is on the same block my building is. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. That's what happens to a vacant building. Okay. Well, by the way, your building is looking quite nice. Uh, thank you. Thank you. It's looking very good. That's part of my history. I don't want to tell you why I done that. Well, let me tell you quick. The only reason I done it so is no vacant business. I was forced to put my own business there. Okay. But I cannot be forced. I have many buildings. I cannot go and open up businesses in every building. Here's more of Bob's. I've been accused for many things, just like the good things. And here, what we try to do here. Now, this is not Bob's. That is our building. Before, um, before Obama, uh, people ran it for a few days. Um, now, on the front of the building, and many of you drove by and saw it. I don't know which one's up and which one's down here. I will bypass the ladies on this one, potentially. Okay. A close-up. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Steve, I'm sure you saw that picture. <coughs> How recently were these? particular graffitis done? They, they were done right before the Obama had to mention us. They ran in uh, February because it was for the primaries. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they forced us, and they didn't force us. I mean, that forced us to go ahead and, and uh, um, wipe them out, you mm -hmm. know, with yeah. and then we yeah. the whole part of the building. Mm -hmm. um, that was not there when it was a business, for me to you or somebody was there, okay? Um, so to, to keep on leaving a building vacant has its own problems um, that the city doesn't like to see. And I feel very, very unfair treated when Passion and Kisses is on that street, the only sexually oriented business in the city of Athens mm -hmm. that I know, besides what's going on in bars that, and restaurants that we all patronize, or some of us patronize, like Casa Nueva, we were reading the newspapers, they had a, a fundraiser that they slipped on it. Okay, if the people don't want to do it, nobody had forced them to do it. This is the view from Stimson Avenue, the very same street I am, and I'm on Stimson Avenue, 
Passion in kisses is the view you see in Stimson Avenue from passion, for passion in kisses. I took this picture from Stimson Avenue. The building that um, um, Passion Kisses, just to clarify something, it is a one building that is has three fronts, basically, or three streets. Stimson, uh, Karen, I think it's Karen, yeah. and East Aston. Although this is the back part of the building, if you're looking from Stimson, this is a building that is, I mean, five feet from Stimson Avenue. Okay. We didn't. We didn't have anything to do with that business being there. It didn't come before us, and I assume it must not have come. And to why mine came before you? Well, yeah. because you ask, it came for a review to Steve, and then it came to us. If it's no other business has come before you for use permit from the time this board has been in existence. Well, for use permit. We have been asked to interpret um, Steve's decisions before on a number of occasions. Right. Sure. Uh, but not to give a use permit. You sure. have never, one of you here. Yes, yes, yeah, we, we have use permits use all the time. We have use use, permits. We've had other yeah, yeah, use yeah. permits. Oh, yeah. It's one of the things we okay. do. In the story audition, and that's why I'm from Hughes, we gave it to Steve in December. Mm -hmm. Steve took it to the mayor because there was too much pressure from the city, probably, or whatever reason. And, uh, and I'm sorry, Mr. Pearson, and then he, the mayor, gave it to Gary Hunter, then the then, then law director. There was nothing on the books, nothing illegal about the business, so what they did, let's keep it from the new administration. Okay? Meantime, it's a business waiting to happen. Meantime, a landlord losing rents. Then the new administration, the new mayor, gives it to the law director. The, you know, Paul gives it to uh, the Mr. Lang. Mr. Lang throws it back to Steve. Steve throws it back to, up to you guys, okay? And, I mean, meantime, we try to figure out what has been allowed and what's not allowed. Now, let's talk about the allowed. I mean, okay. if you look under nightclubs in any telephone book that they do have gentlemen's clubs on that city, you're going to find the gentleman's club listed at the nightclubs. Okay? That tells me that a, 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 an average person, if he's looking to find a gentleman's club, will look under nightclubs. So they are, we assume that the nightclub is a club with entertainment, just the <coughs> gentleman's club has adult entertainment. Now, to call the gentleman's club not a nightclub, is I'll tell you why I, anyway, Please. just as brief, my, why I don't call this a nightclub is because, by definition, in the in my in the dictionary yeah. I use, it says that a nightclub is an establishment open at night offering food, drink, floor shows, dancing, etc. Uh, every nightclub I've ever been to, Can and I the that's the whole definition. Okay. Is this, this is in the uh, Random House Webster's College Dictionary. It says nightclub pronounced nightclub, noun, verb. Uh, it, it's just an establishment, open at night, offering food, drink, floor shows, dancing, etc. Madam Chairman, can we let him finish? He's going to make his point. I hope you expedite your point, just, sir. You, you wanted me to you know, give you that. That's, that's the definition. So uh, for, just so we have it in the record, that's the definition of a nightclub. Mr. Perkins, can you make your point quickly, please? We don't need any more history. Not I hear the frustration. I hear the frustration and I hear the anger, but uh, okay. we'd like to get. Okay. We're just the appeals board, sir. Sure, okay, I understand. It's getting late, but, um, you know, that's something that's the first chance I had to talk about in your body for um, um, all those $15,000 a month on coming in. Mm -hmm. Because of this decision you make, so I would like you to hear, you know. Um, I heard. Um, Chris, to say that, uh, uh, and I knew that, that uh, there's going to be some other entertainment there as comedy. There are going to be stand-up comedians there. So now I'm asking you, if we come here and ask you for a comedy club, we don't want to have that either. Because he will have a comedy club going on, or the, 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 the things of the comedy club going on. 
they, they were business of town, the one I just mentioned earlier, that they had, and, you know, um, they took the clothes off. Now, on this business, nobody went and yanked the license out. It is a bar, but they are, that happened there. Um, difference. You guys, you know, said that this application is not different than the previous one. If anybody looks the address on the previous one, it's not this address. It is, this is part of the previous address. These three applications, the previous one was talking from 9 to 13 West Timson, was the whole front of that building. This one doesn't say 9. The very address is different. That says 11 to 13. Okay? The other one was talking about different amount of parking spots. The other one was talking about fixing fixed seats, a different amount of fixed seats. One of these applications, the one at the nightclub, uh, talks about 180 seats. The difference between time. fixing seats and the fixed seats. The last time was 120 seats. Mm -hmm. Last time there were less seats, you're right. So it is a different application. The one under entertainment, it still talks 180 seats, the parking is different. The theater, of course, talks, uh, and the parking is different for uh, uh, proposed number. The original, the total parking is the same. The proposed parking for the location is different. Okay? So this is a different application, and we should have the right to ask Steve to interpret it, to tell us, should we? Can the theater go there? Can nightclub go there? So that's the point about the difference. And, and finally, I'm a businessman that have worked very hard to bring thousands of dollars in this town for all of us. I have employed hundreds and really hundreds of people with my convenience stores, the video stores, the the every business I have, the real estate. Every property we buy, we improve in it, including this the same one that on Stimson Avenue. When I want to put apartments, I want I was probably hire will be 30 people for two years working there, many contractors. Gonna be money coming in our town. Now you guys gonna force me if I do, if you keep on saying we don't want to let you have what we, we want you to have, but we don't have laws against what we want you to have. Or, now, on this thing, we don't have laws against it, but we're going to make a law against it because we don't like what you want to put there this time. Then you, you're going to make some of the people to start looking to work for someplace else. And that's what we're supposed to be doing here. Okay, but we're, we're not doing any of that. The, what you want to tell us tonight is how, and you have done, it, it, you, you did do just recently, you said something about how you believe that Steve was in error when he made his determination that this was not, that this was the same application. Right. That's what we need to be addressing here right now. Not all, not all the okay. other stuff, the other things that you would like to do with your building. The only thing that we're here tonight to address is whether or not Steve correctly rejected the applications that were submitted because of saying that they were the same thing as before. And you have stated that you believe they are different. That's what, what, what we're here to address tonight. Okay. Is there anything else that you have to say I'd about like how to they're different? I'd like to have another 30 seconds for a close how, how they're different, yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, this, this case has created a lot of news in many cities around Ohio. We have got, get many calls from nightclub operators that they do offer adult entertainment. This place now, it is on the highlight. The Athens, Ohio is on a highlight and it's on a focus for many clubs to come to, to town. This operation here will be run by a landlord that on the lease has, that's me, on the lease has that if the, the, the business is not run according to my high, highest expectation, I will step in and I will set the rules and they have to follow. This business is going to be run by somebody that I know their family for many years and, and, uh, uh, and that person for many years. And I know he's a, a hardworking, clean record, 
um, uh, gentleman that, want, that has a dream. Now, if this business doesn't gonna happen there, guys, I'm, I'm just giving you a statement and I hope I'm wrong. This business is gonna be in the corner of Athens because we have new regulations that will not allow other ones to try to come to Athens. We'll go to the, gonna be to the corner of Athens and gonna be in the alley and then you talking about the crime, we might get the crime in a back alley. We instead to put it in a place that has a lot of lights, street lights. We put uh, 11 or 12 lights on the building. We have already a, a, a foundation for a pole to put more lights on it. Now, reality is reality. Uh, things will happen. So um, just try to find reasons to turn it down just because we don't like it. Um, maybe soon be, or because we have pressure by, our, by other people. Um, I don't think that should be the way to go um, for the well-being of the town overall because this might be an adult club but this could be watched very closely by somebody that has interest and on the east neighborhood my kid goes in the, uh, on, the east, uh, on the east elementary too um, I have interest, I have a lot of property around there um, my office is only two blocks away so please um, do what, what you think is right and don't let the pressure just from one group to affect us uh, because I'm sure this group does not want to see what was in one of the pictures as a graffiti and I don't want to have the resources to keep on opening up being my own businesses in the vacant buildings that have been created because the city somehow has made a mistake. Somebody told me they made a typo mistake Mr. Prokosh, your 30 seconds are up. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Who is um, wishing to speak next? And you have something to I add have something that's, to say in that's new. Yeah, okay. I live at 102 North Lancaster Street. And you were previously sworn. I'm a concerned citizen. I lived was. here in Athens in the same house since March of 1959. I want to make a remark that I walked into the mid middle of a storm. I thought it was going to be that a little bit. And I must say, that it sounds to me as if the board is caught trying to use a code as a zoning code instead of a board of zoning appeals. I think that people don't understand that. What Mr. Pearson did is he made a decision. I have never heard in all the years I've been involved with the city since 1989 really when I served on the Board of Zoning Appeals, which I got off of because I didn't like the floodplain stuff. Mr. Pierce and I have known each other since he came to town. I have a close relationship with him, and I have learned from him, and he has publicly said he's learned from me. Now, I followed this as much as I could through the Athens News and the Messenger. I got most of my information from the Athens News because I subscribe to it. I can't subscribe to the Messenger because it doesn't work out. I subscribe to other newspapers. This is not a local issue, what is before you. I want to speak to the topic tonight. I have yet, in my experience with Mr. Pierce, caught him making a decision that would be unfair. He reads the code closely. I have watched him. I have watched him when I brought up an objection, for example, on something, and he says, yeah, but it says here. I said, Steve, you're right. Once in a while, he says, I'm right. Very rarely. <laughs> I think that since this is a new procedure, I never heard of the appeal being done like this. And I am aware 
of what's going on tonight in terms of what is happening. I appreciate Mr. Prokos' problem and the people involved. I really do. And I thought the attorney was making a case for the appeals. Now, <coughs> this belongs in a court. I also read had some of the decisions that came from the court on this zoning business. As far as I'm concerned, I think the board would be remiss unless it could show me I would not be convinced that they're not wrong. If they say that Mr. Pearson ruled wrong, I think he ruled right. He has showed me sections of the code. This is very complicated for me. I hesitated whether I should speak at all. I almost felt like getting up and saying a plague on all your houses, all three of you. <laughs> you appellate, the common police court in the state of Ohio, and, and I mean the board and city council. Thank you very much, but I think the board must, if it doesn't want to make a mistake, say yes. Mr. Pearson, you did right. Now remember, I'm a friend of his as well, but I try to be objective as I can. And I understand what the attorney was trying to do, and I appreciate that. I understand what the board is trying to do. Thank you very much. I hope you follow my suggestion, which is, it ought to be unanimous. Mr. Pierce is right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sligo. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone else here this evening who's wanting to um, add to the commentary? Help guide us in our decision. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. You previously sworn? Did you did you swear? I can't hear you very well. Did you previously swear to tell the truth? Yes, I did. You did. Will you state your name and my, your address for the record, please? My name's Tony Santone. I live at one three three nine zero Rocky Point Road. But my business is uptown Athens, 12 South Court Street. I have a cold, I get stuffed up. Um, and I've been an uptown business owner, retail store owner, since 1979. So I recognize a lot of people in the room. Uh, I just come here in support of Mr. Prokos. And uh, being an uptown businessman, we have a, and a small business owner, we have a fight on our hands every day to stay alive. So we always like to see, excuse me, uh, less empty spaces, more business. So we support something going in that building, whatever they decide to do, but we hope that uh, he's not singled out and that uh, uh, improvements to the property have been made and we like to see um, some good decisions for the uptown business owners. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who needs to speak? Here's the uh, I'm David Wirtschafter. My address is 13390 Rocky Point Road, and I've uh, previously been sworn. Uh, I'm here to support Mr. Stotts. Um, the business he's applied for is a legal business. It's in the most unrestricted zoning code, and there was no prohibition on it until recently, before he applied. Um, but I'm concerned as a person who one day might, may want to start a business in Athens, that whatever business I want to start, even if it's legal, even if it's within the zoning code, uh, if it's unpopular with the group of people in Athens, would have to come before the uh, Board of Appeals, and based on a fairly broad definition of morality or general welfare, uh, be denied, you know, that business or that use permit. Um, so I, I'm just objecting to such a broad interpretation of that first part of the code and that the Board of Appeals would get to do that on, uh, after the fact, after business has already been, um, you know, applied for to say, you know, this business is not allowed and another business is without, you know, based on that broad of a, of a uh, portion of the code. Okay. Uh, 
That's Thank all. you. Okay. Is there anyone else this evening who wants to speak? All right. Um, at this point, there has been a lot of commentary, not all of it to the point, but um, is there... Our attorney for um, the, the um, application, was there anything that came up in this presentation so far that gives you something additional that you need to say before we close the comments from the floor? Yeah, I have nothing additional to add. I just want to thank you for allowing us to make the presentation and uh, mm -hmm. thank uh, all those people that uh, did speak in behalf of the applicant. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Well, then, um, the comments from the floor are closed, and um, it's time for us to have our own discussion. Um, what we are here this evening for is to determine whether or not Steve acted correctly, Mr. Pearson ad acted correctly when he um, denied the applications. And he denied them uh, based on uh, their being not different from the case that we had decided against two months previous. That's how I understand what's going on. Is that what we all understand to be what we're here tonight to do? Yes. yes and, okay. And although, as Mr. Perkins pointed out, there may be particular um, things that are different about the applications in terms of the site, part of the building that would be used and therefore the address, the number of fixed seats, the number of parking spaces, so in that sense they are different. But I think the request remains the same and it is for um, uh, a business that would um, yeah. the use have a sexual orientation that uh, we decided was not in keeping with um, the code or the yeah. businesses that are there or even the businesses that are said to be allowed in the zone. Right. That the, um, the various um, suggestions, the one that was the main suggestion that they were making in the case that we heard before was that it would be like a an assembly hall. An assembly with hall. Dancing. Right. Yes. But I think they also mentioned at that time that it could be like a theater or a nightclub. And that's, I think, why we looked up those other words. But anyway, and determined that it was not a theater Let's get back by to definition. Let's nor Steve make the right decision. So that yes. he, it, it was the, in general, all of the, all that we've heard this evening, the presentation we'd heard this evening, Nothing is the same as what we heard that time. And that's the one that we denied. And based on that, Steve looked at what we've just been listening to this evening, but the, the written, in the written application form, um, and heard the same thing as had been rejected. So he, um, he it, I said no. And, um, I suppose we need to go about whether we think he was correct in his decision. <coughs> Does anybody need any further discussion before, in, in their own minds, have you, have you determined whether or not Steve was correct? Okay. He based his decision on our decision. Yeah. Yes. And, he, and we, it, from what we can tell, he understood our decision <laughs> the same way we understood our decision. Right. Okay. Whether the decision was correct is currently being decided in a court in, in any case, but it was based on that decision that Steve made his determination. Do you agree that he did it correctly? Yes. Do you agree that he did it correctly? Yes. Do you agree that he did it correctly? Yes. And do you agree that he did it correctly? I do. I also agree that he did it correctly. Just to specify, is this for all three cases that you're voting yes. on or one at a time? For case 08, Do we need to make a motion? I. 0809I080810I. Okay, you can, why don't you why don't we do this as a motion? You move. Okay, I move that we that um, let's see. <laughs> that we determine. Um, 
I move that. What am I moving? In um, all these three cases. That we affirm? Yes. We, we affirm that um, Mr. Pearson uh, was made the correct decision in his um, denial of the establishment of an adult entertainment business, the establishment of adult theater, the establishment of an adult, adult nightclub at the reference location. Okay. Do we have a second then? We're, gonna, we're doing this all over again. Second. Okay. All right. We'll just start again. Yes. 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 And uh, Roger? Yes. 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 And I also vote yes. So does that work for the minutes done that way? We all have to listen to the playback because Ms. Hollow this was quite a long motion. Yeah. <laughs> was it? No, I just filled around a long time before I got to it. <clears throat> okay. All right. And um, that is, um, we've decided, Steve, that uh, Mr. Pearson, that you acted appropriately when you denied that applicant, those three applications. Um, but we do have also on the agenda this evening um, other business, and we need. Has everyone had an opportunity to read the minutes from the? Yes, yeah, so yeah. okay. accept the minutes as presented. Okay. Uh, all agreed. All agreed. Anybody with a problem? No. Then they're accepted as uh, written. There, one other thing that we, that isn't actually on the agenda, but needs to be, is Michelle Drebold has requested a leave of absence. We need to determine whether or not, apparently there is no procedure other than our determining it uh, for her to have a leave of absence. It hasn't been requested before. Um, the possibility, there's, there's a couple of possibilities. Either we say, no, she just, well, there are no leaves of absence. We serve <coughs> at, the, at the pleasure of the mayor. I think that's the mayor's decision. The mayor has decided that it's our decision. Is well, what I've been told. Give me a pink pong ball. <laughs> Steve, maybe you could elucidate. Maybe you could elucidate. My understanding is that um, Mayor Weil has determined. It's been decided that it's our jurisdiction because it's not anywhere <clears throat> stated, and things like that having to do with the operation of the board are determined by vote of the board. I still think we, we, we serve at the discretion of the mayor. Well, apparently, we must think it's all right. Um, my name is Steve Pearson, I'm the zoning administrator for the city of Athens. At the last meeting, Ms. Drabel had announced that she would like to um, not serve as a board member for a year. But my recollection of what she said was she would like to come back as a board member and finish out her term once she came back to town. Right. Um, and then I had said that I would contact the law director on your behalf to see how that procedure might work out. Um, I suppose there are two different things going here, too. One, can the board function without that member and the board essentially grant her a leave of absence, um, you know, with lack of any policies or procedures in place for how that's done um, or any attendance requirements of members. The second way of looking at it would be if you think that you need a replacement member and if so how would that replacement member be seated what would the process be who would seat them for how long and would they be seated and then withdraw that seat when Mr. Drabel came back mm -hmm. uh, and temporary interim um, alternate member to be would have to be appointed if we were going to do that if we were going to keep we going to stay at the two we operated for many years with just one alternate, and then we finally got a second alternate, and it, it's been good to have the second alternate. It means that in many cases we were able to hear cases that we wouldn't have been able to hear Especially otherwise. Especially in the summer months. Yeah, so having two has been very alternate. good. However, it hasn't, I mean, I, I know how we can function without it, so, but I was hoping that you might have spoken directly to the mayor or to somebody else. I, I spoke only with Michelle, who told me that uh, Mayor Weil had indicated that it would be something for us to decide, and we could decide either, you know, however we thought would um, best suit the functioning of the and the needs of the board. Mm -hmm. uh, but did you have that word from anybody, or is it just no? No. 
Now, as a matter of fact, um, when I presented um, the circumstance to the law director and asked um, for input, um, the only correspondence that I received back um, from the mayor was that a replacement, in his belief, the process would be followed as if there was an original appointment to the board. In other words, he would make a ap replacement appointment um, and they would be confirmed by city council. Okay. So that's a, my Just a that's straight my replacement knowledge. appointment, not a temporary replacement right. appointment. Can I suggest okay. just we just go with the one alternate for time being and but as a courtesy we need to, to each other. In the summer. Yeah, and then but you know if we can't make it the meeting, give you know, you know advance notice to everyone so that you know we How don't have to come in be short. There's that would probably be, that yeah. we take a t we take a long time finding somebody who's willing to be up here and be abused for a dollar ninety eight a year. Yeah. Well, I kind of so, like no, just, I don't like that. I we either get like somebody it. permanent so we all have some stability. Well, we well, only we want had her to two come back. Well, and that was nice. It was nice, but we certainly functioned. For we can yeah, function, we, but we uh, got along very well yeah. with this one alternate for a long, long time. Yeah. yeah. So I see no need to go any further than. So what we're saying is we only need one alternate. Is that it? Yeah. And just, but you know, if, if I can make it, and I would make everyone know that I'm not going to be here, and then you know, we don't have to find at the last minute. Just so then, give more advance notice if we can make it the meeting. And have her just. I kind of like good. keeping the experience of the person that we already have. If she's willing to come back yeah. and she's finish out her term, yeah. I would. That's what I would most. Yes, I, I see no problem with that. Okay. So we vote on it. Ms. Draybolt, a leave of absence for one year, and that we function mm -hmm. for that year with five members. Okay. And one alternate. And one alternate. Is there a second of, for that motion? Yes. I second. Okay, and we've got a move and seconded. Can, and all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> you can't get a hip replacement until she gets back. Right? You know that. Right? Okay. Get that tennis stuff. All right. Well, it was that. <laughs> I in favor or opposed, Raj? He was opposed, but <laughs> okay. But we've still got four against you. So all right, we're going to uh, call. Is that clear as mud? We've got Michelle with a leave of absence to her return. All right, good. Meeting adjourned. Yeah, he's not getting